Yeah. Okay, look, that's a great way to time. We don't have any questions popping up yet in the chat. So I'm going to read another summary from the paper for both of you guys to sort of comment on, and maybe this will spur a question or two. And it relates directly to what you just said, Marcus. So this is going back to Paysock's paper. And I kind of highlighted four key words here. The words are place, possibility, universal, and indigenous. And so mm. we can maybe sort of land here. And um, here's the quotes, the one you've heard, and it'll frame the, the other three. For thousands of years, we have been taught to focus on the words that were given rather than the place they were given from Rabbi Korngold. And then Rabbi Komen says something that sounds a lot like Marcus, says uh, Pesach's framing of this. This inquiry into place and selfhood presents a profound possibility, an exploration, and then here's the quote, of the awesome mystery of the things we are usually moving too fast to see, during which time we acquire a profound respect for the plants and animals we come to know intimately. Mm. Yeah, that sounds like Marcus. And then, yeah, yeah, and then here's a great um, quote that is uh, Pesach sort of framing eco psychology in a way from his uh, cultural identity. Uh, situating culture within nature, this work moves beyond the particular cultural experience of diasporic Ashkenazi Jews like myself and verges into the perhaps universal human condition of relationship to land and psyche. Mm. And of course, for society and psyche, self and psyche, but land is this element we have excluded in our, you know, Western narrative or biosphere, I would say in my language. And then the fourth quote here, to your point again, Marcus, in today's world, Jews have the opportunity to make any locale, their axis mundi, to become indigenous anywhere on earth. Yes. So... I see you exemplifying that. I hear you saying that. I'd love to hear, Pesach, if you want to comment on that summary. I know I kind of read it slowly, but we have, you know, 15 more minutes here to kind of talk through these ideas of indigeneity and so forth. I appreciate, Chris, you reading some of the quotes that I borrowed from others because, you know, <laughs> so much of this work was from my own exploration and, you know, my own fulfilling of my curiosity and then just kind of like stringing together what I learned from It's an others. incredible threading that you do bringing all these elements together, I think. Thanks, brother. I, I appreciate that. It was, it, it, it's been fun over the years to do that, right? To figure some of this stuff out. And so, you know, that quote from Rabbi Cummins is him talking about that practice of heat bow to do. And the exploration that I had there was one of the practices that we were teaching these 11 and 12 year olds who happen to be um, Jewish kids is to be able to sit outside at the foot of these huge redwoods or what what have you and just be there for for minutes right maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes and then sometimes I've I've liked to um we we have this great I wish I I brought my ram's horn but we have this great ram's horn that makes this awesome sound that's usually only blown a couple times in the jewish year but i would tell these kids you know when you hear the sound of our ancestors you can come back and so they would just be on their own out they'd find a spot and so it's it's this like <clears throat> we're always moving so fast right we're always looking in the way i have my phone right here i'm always looking at my phone like this close <laughs> right i'm trying to i'm typing fast but when i can get out into the wilderness i can just be at such a slow pace right and i can just experience the relaxation of seeing the wind move through the trees and i'm i'm really blessed privileged and grateful to learn how to do that in my mm -hmm. 20s and 30s and so to be able to invite 11 and 12 year olds to to get that is just like a phenomenal gift and like the work that, that you're, you're doing markets of work, working with with young people and helping them to see that like way earlier than we did i think is is huge and and so yeah just to go back to that point i just happen in this paper to talk about the Jewish experience, because that's one of the things I was exploring in my graduate studies and one of the identities that I have. And it's just kind of like my access point. 
but really all the practices that I share are accessible to everybody. And it's really our shared, our shared connection to the earth and our shared connection around food is mm. one of the things. And I'd say the third, maybe, I mean, there's probably a few things that all humans can, can relate to, right? Food, we live in land as long as we can acknowledge it. And I think the other one is dreams. We all have dreams. We all sleep. So that's kind of my background is in depth psychology, which like first and foremost is very much about dreams. And I was just sharing with my wife, like most of us humans, we don't talk, we don't share about dreams, right? We feel like really, I think, um, intimidated to talk about our dreams with each other and to talk about our relationship to land or disconnection to land with each other. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm just interested in exploring the practices that I've discovered and how we can all connect on getting reconnected to, to the earth, to the natural, the more than human or other than human world. Let me ask one more thing. The paper begins so beautifully with you all, you know, talking about your youth, looking at the stars from your parents' house and, um, you know, trying to reconcile, this is a different type of reconciliation, this compelling sense of connection to the stars with, as uh, Marcus is saying, you know, the traumatic world that we live in, the world that we live in. And so now I think you have really found a very credible connection. And then you've also engaged in these practices. Do you have a sense of indigeneity now? Would you say that you feel more of that person, feel to be more of that person? Yeah, for sure. Um, so a couple, couple things on that. One is that um, the time that I was writing, writing this, um, it's been, it's been a while since I first started developing this work. It was like 10 years ago. I grew up mostly in Las Vegas and I had just left Vegas and moved to the Bay area. And so I was, you know, I was like, like Abraham, Lech Lecha, like I left the land of my ancestors and went out into the wilderness that I didn't know. And I was in the Bay Area, I was in Berkeley and San Francisco, which is just so different from Vegas. So I was really, you know, had the opportunity almost like from nothing, starting from scratch to reinvent myself, to explore identity, to get connected to the unique environment that's out there. And so, you know, over the years I've moved a lot and I've continued to sort of like adapt to the different environments that I've been in. So that's, that's one thing. The other thing I wanna share I'm prepared with just a couple of books. And I, I only quoted this one once a bit, um, but Nature and the Human Soul by Bill Plotkin has been huge for me. I, at first, I didn't understand a lot of my experience. And then when I read this book, I did much more. And he talks about eco-awakening, how many of us have this experience of awakening to the natural world. And, and in hindsight, that is what I what happened to me when I was on my parents' balcony or even taking the trash out at night in my little suburban community and just seeing the vastness of the sky, there was an eco awakening. And, and Plotkin talks about, talks about how that's sort of the first step in coming to terms with our own unique soul experience. And he really talks about how getting connected to, connected to nature is essential in getting to connected to our, he, he calls it soul or um, mythopoetic, unique eco niche. And so, yeah, over, over the last 10 years through my exploration of, of nature and psyche, um, I do feel like I have um, really gotten kind of clear about who I am and I'm still discovering that. And, and, you know, the, the last thing I'll say about that, and, and again, Plotkin talks about how there's certain kind of tasks of each part of our lives that we need to meet. And really that middle childhood from like age four or five, when we sort of develop our ego selves through puberty, it's really important to have a connection to the natural world. And I really didn't. And so it was at age 27, 28, when I kind of filled in that gap. And a big part of that for me was getting involved with Wilderness Torah and mentoring these 11 and 12 year olds. And even though I was 
you know, more than twice their age. And I was a mentor for them on some level. I was on the same journey of connection to nature with them. And I was really intimidated when I first started going camping and getting myself just real vulnerable in the wilderness and um, just the impact, the positive impact that that had on my psyche is tremendous. Okay, Marcus, I want to pass that over to you because, um, you know, there's so much going on in this conversation, but the sort of one of the strong that, that links to uh, what I hear you saying about being black in this culture and what Pesach just said, this, this experience of being in wilderness in nature, engaging with kids and as a mentor, all that led Pesach into, if I'm quoting you correctly, Pesach, or paraphrasing you, a stronger sense of your own identity. You feel like stronger in yourself now. Pesach's nodding. And then Marcus, we talked earlier a few days ago, you were talking about one of your kids calling you from college or whatever and telling you how he's managing this really rough situation. And I, when I, when, you know, when you talk about that to me, I hear you talking about these kids have developed life skills through the stronger sense of identity, through the relationships, through the process, all the stuff that you're about. It's funny, you know, like uh, just, just to connect, you know, um, with what you said previously, it's um, it's funny the dynamic here. She says the the impact of nature on anyone from every different walks is the same. If you really um, it, there's no like your experiences in nature is exactly what I'm aiming to do here in North Minneapolis is balance out the benefits of nature because that balance has been tilted, right? So um, my kids are learning how to feel their feelings in green spaces, how to really process what's happening to them instead of reacting, right? Whereas you're talking about going camping and your love for being outside and stuff, but I know enough kids and black people in this neighborhood that would not go camping right? Because of their fear of what would happen if they go camping. And we're not talking about what would happen because of nature, but what would happen because of humans, the invasive species. For them, there is some trauma being alone and isolated. And um, I'm trying to get rid of that way of thinking, not by moving uh, physically, but by being still here and creating uh, version of nature. There's organic patterns in nature. And uh, I got to tell you, while there are like different approaches, they all have the same meaning. And I appreciate you sharing that experience uh, growing up. And when you talk about, you know, feeling stronger as an adult now, I feel like I've always been an indigenous person because I was railed in my mother's house. Even though I was raised in America, I had to go home. So what was happening out in the world didn't matter because my mom had installed in me the need to have respect and, you know, come home at a certain time and eat certain food. She cooked a certain food. She taught me how to cook. Kids don't know where their fries come from these days. And what we're doing is trying to give them the tools needed to actually process these things and learn how to grow everything so the questions posed to them is like what can you grow most people name plants and foods and this and that but really the ones that are th really thinking will tell you relationships community possibilities everything and that's what i'm aiming to do here is use food as a tool to create social change in the, my immediate environment and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share that with you guys. And I hope whoever watches this talk can really try to see that while we're two from two different places and two different people, we're really the same in a lot of ways. And I appreciate the fact that I had the opportunity to have met you because I'm hoping we can build and grow from here. Amen. Yes. Meet, yeah. Meet in the woods somewhere sometime, you know, and uh, <laughs> play some music or whatever i got you um and yeah thank you for this opportunity chris yeah thank you for yeah. being here with us
Thank you so so much, Chris and Marcus, and for your help, Katie. Um, I love. I'm I'm in Vegas. Chris, you're in Austin, right? And Marcus, you're in Minneapolis, and so yeah. we're all all over the, all the over country, the really. And uh, yeah. maybe maybe at, at some point we meet in person and and do do exactly what you said. Yeah, let's go to all the places. We're good. Right, <laughs> love it, love it. Yeah. That sounds Thanks great. So much, y'all. Yeah. Um, until then, we zoom. And I'll all wrap right. this up real fast, guys, by saying. Thank you again to both of you. And again, to the listening people out there, this content and these two gentlemen came to me through the All Creation Project. I was editor of the most recent issue called Envisioning Transformation. And so you can go to allcreation.org to read Paysock's paper, to listen to Marcus more in depth in his interview, and just really encourage you to do that and get on board with this fuller life experience we're having through finding our connectedness to nature in new ways that I know I didn't start my life out thinking was available mm. uh, as a person raised in Christian culture. And I'm excited about this new era of connection for people of faith, people of their self-defined outlook, people who are anti-faith, secular, whatever. I think this, this teshuva and this reconnection and all these things that we're seeing in the work and in the academics, I think this is for everyone. And Pesach, you rocked it. You really changed the world with this paper. And Marcus, you're changing the world every moment with these kids. And I sure hope we get a chance to interview you guys more because you really are two of the best leaders we have. So thanks again. Appreciate you. Thank yeah, you so much. Appreciate you too. And um, everybody else, thanks for listening and tuning in. We'll see you next time.